All right, so for those of you that are ready for today's class, give me a ready in the chat box. All right, give me a ready in the chat box and uh, make sure your notebook is out on the table so we can show a start. All right, so I've taken out my Excel as well. So uh, let's start. So question four. So how do we do this question four? So come back, uh, this is document. So we are at discount. So do you still remember the three D? Okay, so one of the D is uh, about discount. So there are two discount, uh, wait, the discount, the discount Niagara, and the discount tonight. All right, so there are two discounts that you have to know. And for discount Niagara, is to what? Untuk menggalakkan pembelian secara meaning uh, we want the customer to buy more items okay more barang niaga more stock therefore we give them discount niaga so we tell the customer if you buy above five shirts okay i will give you another 20 percent discount okay so when customer here are you other like 20 percent discount then you think okay so i will go and pick another five or another two or three clothes so that I can get the discount Niagara. All right, so this is a discount Niagara. And for discount tonight is what? To encourage fast payment. Okay, so all the definitely I should have back at Sydney. So for the discount, uh, this is a 3D. So we are looking at this one now, the Janice discount, so discount Niagara, menggalakan pembelian secara pukau. And for discount tonight adalah menggalakan pembayaran emos, meaning we are encourage the customer to pay faster, secara kada segera, fast. All right, okay. So come back to this question, question four. So let me read it. Urus niaga yang berikut diambil daripada buku perniagaan Beyond. So this is a, a buku from a perniagaan named Beyond. So this is the date, February 5, 8, 9. 12. So for February 5, what happens? So perniagaan beyond telah beli barang niaga secara kredit uh, 19,200 daripada syarikat Tudu dan terima discount niaga 20%. Okay, so this is a discount niaga 20%. So uh, after that, there is also 8th. Okay, later we, this is, these are the questions. Okay, but before that, let me read through it first. So, penegangan dia memulangkan. So, there is a pulangan. Apa? This is a, a pulangan belian. Because tadi kita beli. Sekarang kita memulangkan. So, this is called a pulangan belian. 2,600 pada harga senarai kerana tersalah jenama. Okay, then on 12th. Menjelaskan ke semua hutangnya dengan check. So we pay all the money, okay, all the hutang by check, and this is the syarat. If lesser than ten days, saya if I pay the money within sepuluh hari, then I get another ten percent. Why? Because this is a discount uh, discount tonight. So what is discount tonight? Discount tonight is to encourage fast payment. As I said just now. All right. So if you pay within 10 days, 10% discount. If you pay within 30 days, one month, okay, a bit late, but it's all right. Okay, as long as you pay dalam 30 hari, then you will get 5%. Okay, it's either A or B. Okay, we cannot add up. We cannot say, okay, within 10 days and 30 days, then you add up. So you get 15%. No, it's either 10% within 10 days. If more than 10 days, but within 30 days, you get 5%. The C will be what? Meaning if it is more than 30 days, 
then you get zero, the other percent, langsung the other discount. Right? That's why when they hear, oh, other discount, so then I'll pay now, lah, within 10 days, then I get another 10%. So I pay less. All right. So look at the question. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to ask very good. So look at A. Nyatakan dokumen perniagaan yang terlibat dalam setiap urus niaga pada tarik yang very good. So now, uh, you have to know at which date, at this date, what is the document that I have to use? Right? So, uh, let me put four here. So, we're doing A. Okay, so, number one. 5th of February 2022. So, we look at it. So, this one. So, now, you have to know, like, what are the documents and for this one mana satu document is for this one so when you say membeli bank niaga secara kredit ah so now you have to think now you have to re recall back what i've taught you in last class all right so if you don't know if you have missed a class or you have forgotten then you might uh, have to rewatch the recording later or within this week. All right. So when I say beli or job orang niaga is, then we have to look at is it secara credit or is it secara uh, wait, secara tunai a check. If it is secara credit, then always the first thing we give invoice. Then if saya sudah bayar or you terima wang or terima wang, then all we get we get a receipt. Okay, but if saya beli atau jual secara tunai atau check, then should we give a Bill tonight. That's it. So the beli atau jual barang niaga. It's either secure credit or secure tonight. If secure credit, we will give invoice. So this is what happens. So for this one, this is a invoice that kita yang uh, bagi. And to be more specific, okay, and uh, but but we're not sure. So for us, the seller, we will receive salinan, the copy salinan, and for buyer, they will receive the asal. All right, okay. But now let me next go to two first. Okay, so number two on eighth. So look at this one. So. Penegaan biaya memulangkan barang bernilai 2,600 pada harga senarai kerana tersalah jaman. So, when you see a pulangan memulangkan, remember, KP. Kad pengenalan. Alright, KP. So, but here in accounting, is not kad pengenalan. This K is for credit and this P is for pulangan. So whenever you see a pulangan, it must be linked to a credit. But it's not just credit. We have to call it a nota. You have to put a nota in front called a nota credit. Right? So this is very simple. Pulangan must be nota credit. Okay. So that's it. Done for this A1 and A2. Now we go to B. What about B? So for B. Net uh, B here. Hitung amount besi yang perlu dibayar. Amount besi yang perlu dibayar jika bayaran dibuat pada 14 February 2022. Okay, so how much do we have to pay by 14 February? So now, you have to see. When did we beli? This is the date yang kita beli. 5th of February. 
Okay, so on 5th of February, kita beli and then kita bayar on 14th of February. To 14th February. Now tell me how many days in between. So 5, to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there are, yes, Shiva is right, nine days. Okay, after calculating, so you found out that there are nine days in between fifth, the date yang kita beli, and 14 is the date yang kita baya, right? Okay, so nine days. So now you go to this charot discount to nine. So you see, look at this charot. Dalam this nine days, mana satu category? Dalam sepuluh hari. So dalam sepuluh hari, I can get another ten percent discount. Okay, after knowing that, we have to do it. We have to do the calculation ourselves. So now, first thing first, you have to know how much yang we are supposed to pay now. Okay, so there are a few figure here. So we have to start on top. So at first. You beli secara so credit 19,200 and you terima discount 20%. Meaning this is actually a harga senarai. The least price. So what you're going to do now is at first, you have to use a 19,200 times the 20% and then you get Okay, so times 19,200 times 20%, yep. 3,840. So this is, uh, you can put in front, this is a discount. Hmm. We have that nicer. Okay, all right, 3,000, I mean, 3,840 for the discount Niagara. So then, uh, this, we use uh, the 19,200 minus the 3,840. And you get 15,360. Right, so this is the amount on invoice, right? The amount that we have to pay after this is discount angle, then this is what we young uh perlu bayar. Right? But look at February 8th. Okay, down on February 8th, kita memulangkan barang niaga 2000. 600 for the Haga Sanarai. Can you see or not? They specifically tell us that this 2600 yela for the Haga Sanarai. So when we want to take out because we cannot pay this amount, this is the amount yang kita perlu bayar for everything. But now on 8, kita telah pulangkan barang yang So when we pulangkan maksudnya, this amount akan kurang. Right, so maybe here you can put an amount. What's the thing called? Hold on, yeah. this is called actually called a Hager invoice, right? Yeah, we can say Hager invoice. So maybe you can just put a Hager invoice here.
Okay. So this is Hage invoice. So on it, so there is a pulangan. So how much is the pulangan first? The pulangan yala 2600 for the Hage invoice. But what about the Hager, you know, Hager invoice for the Hager scenario? Yeah, the Pulangan is 2600 for the Hager scenario on the list price. So now I have to take out the 20%. Then only I can minus back the invoice. So the 2600, I'm going to show you here, 2600, I times 20% because this is the discount angle yang kita dapat. So I put that 20% equals how much? 2,600 times 20%, you get 520. So this is a discount for this item. So you use the 2,600 minus the discount, which is 520, then you get 2,080. Then this is your Hager invoice. There's a pool on it. So, Maksud Sekarang. The invoice will be use this Hager invoice minus this Hager invoice. All right. So use 15,360 minus 2,080. Then you get 13,280. So this is somehow the final figure that we need to pay All right so this thing will appear in your invoice for well, this pulangan billion will um, uh, appear in your nota credit the nota credit will show this amount okay then at the end you minus you get 13,280 so this is the amount that we have to pay now, the Hager invoice, yang latest, all right? After you minus off apa yang kamu pulangkan. So now, come back to this question for B. So the B is saying that we are paying this amount within 10 days. So if we pay within 10 days, I get another 10%. 10% based on this latest amount, all right? So here, discount to 9. So use the 13,280 times the 10%. 1,328. So you get 1,328. That is a discount to nine. Okay, then only now we can calculate the amount per se young. Below the buyer. So you just use this one, the latest one, this figure. 13,280. Then we minus off the discount to now, which is 1,328. Then you get 11,952. So this is the final amount that we have to pay if Jika Bayaran de bought by the 14th February 2022. So this one okay or not? Uh, so this one, a bit technical, a bit of maths thinking you have to do, okay? So make sure you understand bit by bit.
right? So if you don't understand, okay, let me use quick one, a quick explanation for you. So let's say on 5th, uh, February, 5th of February, I buy things from a sharikat. Okay, let's say a kasut. Let's say I'm buying kasut. Of course, not just one. I'll buy a lot. I'll buy Nike, Under Armour, UA, Adidas, Fila. Okay, I buy all of them. Okay, but different uh, model, different like Air Force, you know, for UA, you got Adidas, you got what? Uh, Pure Boost or whatever. Okay. So because I'm selling, I'm reselling the shoes. So I need to get the shoes, the kasut from uh, the supplier. So for now, in this case, my supplier is Sharikat Tudo. Okay. So I believe all this suit, uh, kasut from Sharikat Tudo. And because I buy a lot, okay, all this price, uh, the pr on, on the price tag, let's say, before discount ah okay so for those of you that shop you go to the uh the store and then when you see when they say other 20 percent discount kat luar, then you walk into the store and then you ask oh so this nike how much are? even though nike there they write 300 ringgit but then they will say before discount so after discount if the discount is 20 percent meaning how much do we have to pay so 300 it times 20%, meaning I get 60 ringgit discount. So I use 300, the original price minus the discount, 60 ringgit, then I'll get 240. Meaning for this pair of Nike, I would just have to pay 240 ringgit. Right? Do you understand so far? If yes, give me a yes in the chat box. Yes in the chat box, if you understand. So this is. What happened in 5th of February? So if you don't understand the whole thing now, I'm explaining to you. So this is the problem here. So this is a discount that I get, the 20% that I get from the shoe. And then so after that, this is the amount that I have to pay, like here. Okay, so discount 20%, so this is the discount. So this is the amount. So I use the original price, 19200 minus... Uh, 3,000, this one is a discount niagara, then I get this amount. So this is the amount that I have to pay now. 240 is equivalent to here. So this will be appeared in my invoice because I buy Sotero credit. Okay, then on 8th of February, because I got a lot of shoes, right? And then I see, 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 hey, Knapper, there's one shoe that I never see before and I think in my head that I never ordered this shoe before, right? So maybe this is a uh, rebook. Have you heard of the uh, rebook? All right, so maybe this brand is rebook, but I never ordered this rebook before, okay? So because if I didn't order it, then why should I pay for it? So I should return the shoe back to the to, to Sharika Todo. So when I return the shoe back, this is called a pulangan belian. I believe, so I pulangkan. So this is called a pulangan belian. So when I pulangkan, definitely the price will go down. Or not? Tadi I hutang 15,260 uh, ringgit, but now I pulangkan the kasut, then I have to minus down again. The, the, the money that I have to pay now will reduce. So now, the, the price on the shoe, the rebook that I'm returning, there the price is saying is 1,000 ringgit. Or well, maybe this is collaborated with some rap star. Okay? Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, uh, is it Eminem or, or Tracy or whatever? Okay, so the price is a bit expensive, 1,000. Or maybe collaborating with Gucci or what? Right? So I don't know. So 1,000 ringgit. So now, again, this is what shown on the price tag. That's why the questionnaire specifically tell you in here Hager Senarai. And don't forget, before I buy the shoe, 
I actually get 20% discount. So when I return this shoe, I'm not returning 1,000 ringgit. Okay, I'm actually returning, so you times 20%, there is a 200 discount, right? Discount. So you're using 1,000 ringgit minus the discount 200, you get 800. So meaning, when I return this shoe back to the person, my hugger in Moisini, I will have to minus 800 ringgit instead of 1,000. Because 1,000 is a hugger scenario before discount. Now I have to calculate the value after the discount, which is 800 ringgit. That's why here, this is the working lah for the pulangan. So this is a hugger scenario. Then this 820 is a discount, so I minus it. Then I get 2080. This is a invoice. Then only I use study bunya 15,360 minus the pulangan, which is 2080. Then I'll get the latest figure, the amount yang perlu dibayar 13,280. Do you understand? If yes, give me a two in the chat box. That's why you don't go straight away go and minus uh, 2,600 because this 2,600 is on the price. Just like you return the shoe, you return 1,000 ringgit when you kasut, but you didn't pay 1,000 ringgit. You get what I mean? You actually pay just 800. So when you return, you just reduce 800. Lah. You cannot go and simply uh, reduce 1,000. Orang itu akan hutang. I mean, uh, lugi. Right? So with that being said, that's all, 13,280. But now, on 12, Penegam Beyond is saying that uh, if we just ask all this, I mean, no, it's not Penegam Beyond, but Todo. So Todo, our supplier is saying that, okay, if you pay us this money now, within 10 days, dalam 10 hari, then you get another 10% discount. Wow, so, so good. I can get to save 10% if I pay within 10 days. So now, how do you calculate the 10%? You use the latest amount, this one, yang perlu dibayar, 13,280, the times the 10%, you get 1,228, then only use the original 13,280 minus the discount, this one, what you calculated just now, then you get this amount. So this is the amount bersih yang perlu dibayar to Sharigan Tudo. Okay, now, so from the beginning to the end. If yes, give me a three in the chat box. All right, so actually we haven't done yet. We got C, so after you understand this thing, uh, it's very simple. Lah. So C is just another uh, day for discount tonight. So now they say, hitung amount bersih yang perlu dibayar jika bayaran dibuat pada 8th of March. So same thing, instead of 14 February, now you are paying on 8th March. So now you calculate. This is it. Dalam 30 days. So uh, from 5th February, February ada 28 hari, right? So uh, 5th. To 28. So it's actually 23, right? Yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. 28 minus 5, 23. And then for March, from this is February. And then for March, 1 to 8. Seven days, all right. So 23 plus 7, 30 days. Ah, or oh, you want to use your finger to calculate from this date, 5th of February, some five, 8th of March. Okay, you calculate, calculate if you get 30 days. Congratulations, ngam ngam on the dot, 30 hari, then you get five percent discount, all right? So now. You can actually use this figure. So this is actually a final figure before the discount tonight. So now you want to calculate the discount tonight. For this one, dalam 
30 hari, you use back the 13,280, you times, instead of 10% now, it is just 5% for 30 hari, so 5%. So one three two eight zero oh, times five percent, you get six six four. Six six four is the discount to nine. It is not the final amount you have to buy. It's just a discount. So if this is a discount, how much do we have to pay? The amount of percent you have to buy. That's how much. So you go and minus it. All right. So you use back the thirteen thousand two hundred eighty minus the discount to nine, which is six six four. So you get 12,606. This is the amount of percent you buy. Okay, now, if okay, give me a C in the chat box. Okay, give me a C in the chat box. Thank you. Very good. All right, so very simple. So it's just that here a bit, uh, complicated okay you need to solve here then only at the end you based on the share discount tonight so this discount tonight is always uh, based on the end Hage emotes this one 13,280 okay now quickly you do a, another similar question here for question five so what do you have to do here hitung jumlah yang perlu dibayar oleh kedai pakaian Alan kepada Alan not Alan Alan kepada syarikat Tam sekiranya hutang dibayar pada A, B, C. Okay, so if bayar pada 17 January, then do we get discount tonight or not? Right, so uh, we have to go one by one. Okay, but before that, let's see how many days are. So uh, this one is the same thing. Kita beli on this date and then kita ada pulangan. Okay, then you terima debit kerana 20, blah, 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 to kurang charge. Okay, and so at the end, uh, you're actually based on this 5th of January. So from 5th, January 5th, sampai 17, is how many days? So 17, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, actually 12 days. Okay, then what about this one? From January 5th, sampai 25th of January, this is 20 days, All right? And then from this one, January 5th, sampai 10th of February. So this is memang, sampai February kan, memang more than 20 days. Memang more than 20 days meaning kosong. The other discount. This one other five percent, and this one other ten percent, based on here, right? Because twenty days. This one is already twenty days right? until twenty fifth January. So if we go to here, maybe more than twenty days. When it is more than twenty days, we got no discount tonight for it. Okay. So come back to here. So we go for question five. Okay, but before we come to ABC, maybe we can go through this one because we need to solve the part here. All right, so kurang 10% discount. Yanker. So these are all the Hage uh, scenario, the least price. So they're telling us that 20 halai baju kurung, kenapa ada sepasang? So you cancel it, it should be sehalai. Okay, a bit typo. So 30 ringgit times 20 halai. So this is 600 ringgit. This one? Other 30 halai skirt pendek, pendek. Then se, se halai is 17 ringgit. So you use 30 times 17, you get 510. Okay, then this one. 
15 halal tudung sa sa tin 15 and so halal is 1960 ringgit and you get 294 All right so 600 510 294 so maybe here i can put the harga sena right equals to 600 plus 510 plus 294 and we get 1404 this is the harga senarai for everything here okay but what about the harga invoice harga invoice means what Harga invoice means the harga senarai tolak the discount tonight. Sorry, the discount niaga. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let me repeat again. It's harga invoice equals to senarai minus the discount niaga. This is a formula. And here, with that being said, so the haggis invoice equals to this one, the haggis scenario, 1,404 minus the discount niaga 10%. So how much is a discount niaga? So if you I want to calculate the discount niaga, and the discount niaga will be based on the Hager scenario. If you want to pick up the formula, the discount niaga is actually the Hager scenario times the percentage. So how much the Hager scenario here is one. 404 and the percentage is 10 percent here so times 10 percent so here you go 140 cent okay so when i want to find my hugger invoice i use a scenario hugger scenario 1404 minus discount nigger one for all forty cent. So my Hager invoice now will be two six one two six three sixty cent. If there's some error in my calculation, do let me know, yeah, because sometimes I might press wrongly as well. Okay, so this is the 5th of January. So this is the Hugger scenario, the discount. So this is a Hugger invoice now that I have to pay. Okay, but there is a pulangan. The pulangan. Okay, so for this pulangan, other dual halai skirt pendek. So we go to dual halai the, the skirt pendek. Skirt pendek is here. Is how much? 17 ringgit sehalai. So based on the Hager Senarai, is it not? So the Hager Senarai is actually dual halai. So I use two dual halai. Times how much? So like 17. So it's equal to 14 ringgit. So I mean 14 ringgit total for dual her life. Is it 14? Ah? I need to knock myself. Ah. 17 times 2. How come it's 14? It's 34. Sorry. 34. Okay, so this is a haggis in the right. Maybe I'll just put RM so that you won't be confused. This is actually RM, not unit. Okay. 
Okay, so here you go. Okay. okay. So this is a hugger. Then what about? Same thing. Now I need to minus from my hugger invoice. Yang tadi saya uh, hutang punya. So if I have a hugger scenario, right? Then I need to find my discount hugger. I also get 10% off from this one. Okay. So the discount hugger will be based on the hugger scenario, right? Times the percentage. So hugger scenario kat sini is 34 ringgit. Times 10% the percentage. Then it is 340. All right. Okay. Now, what is the hugger invoice for this pulangan? Okay. Hugger invoice for this pulangan. So it's actually, you use a 34 ringgit. Minus the 340, and you get 30 ringgit 60 cent. Not done yet. So, this is the amount that I have to minus from my original Hugger invoice from this 5th of January. So, now Hugger invoice new latest winner. We use the 1000. 263.60 cent, this one, and minus the 30 ringgit and 60 cent. And you get 1,233. Let me put Okay, so this one, when is this one, you get this one. 1233. So, yep, you got it. But, see, in 16th, the remote not a debit the share cut Baju kurung keda bernilai 36 ringgit. To kurang charge 6 ringgit sehelai. Okay, now they are telling us that there is a nota debit. Okay, why? Because they actually to kurang charge for 6 ringgit sehelai. Is it not? So, tadi when we, you look back for your baju kurung keda, it's 30 ringgit sehelai. But now it becomes 36 ringgit because they already took around charge 6 ringgit. So you use 30 plus 6, you get 36. You know what I mean? So now you have a took around charge. Wow, so this question is like. Banyak perubahan, banyak calculation. Okay, so you just have to, because I already calculated the 30 ringgit. So you can see that in this 36 ringgit, is actually composed of 30 ringgit yang kita sudah kira dalam sini and another 6 ringgit yang belum kira. So now we just have to focus on this 6 ringgit. You know what I mean? So there is 6 ringgit and berapa pasang? Oh, it's actually all oh, for baju kurung is actually pasang, is it? Because it's pair, what, right? So it's up and down. That's why they don't use her life. Am I right? I don't know, my Tata Bahasa already, I already given back my Tata Bahasa to my BM teacher. So I've forgotten all this, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, the, the, okay, I forget about it. I couldn't record it. Okay, anyway, so this six ringgit, then you times, berapa pasang? 20 pasang. Then you get how much? Six times 20, 120. So remember, uh, this 120, Yelah, sebelum discount. So, do the same thing again. You need to find the Hager Sunarai and then the discount Yager. So, for Hager Sunarai, I already got this 120. How do I get 120? I use 6 ringgit times the 20 pasang. So, I get 120. Or you want to show the working? I can show the working for you. 6 ringgit times 
20 pasang. And then you get RM120. And then for this discount, I guess same thing based on the Hago Sunrise, this 120, I get 10% discount actually. Maybe 12 ringgit discount Niagara. And the Hago invoice for this Tokurang charge. Is actually using the Hagas and hundred and twenty ringgit minus the discount Niagara twelve ringgit, and there you go. You get a uh, hundred and eight ringgit. But not done yet. I have to find my Hagas invoice yang baru again, the latest one sekarang. So this is not the new one. Huh? this is the new one. Now, maybe I put the new two. Okay, so this is the latest one. So you use, now you use the latest one, one, two, three, three. But tadi the just 108, meaning now you tambah. So can I have to pay more. I have to pay extra 108 ringgit. So you tambah into it. So now you get 1,000. 341. So this is the Hage invoice yang ter baru or you say paling baru, the latest one. Yeah, I know this is a bit you need to do again and again. So that's it. Okay, but not done yet now. Only we enter to A. Okay, so what about A? So A is saying that we pay on 17th so what is the jumlah yang perlu dibayarkan? So if I pay on 17, tadi already calculated 12 days from 5th sampai 17 is 12 days. So I get 10%. So what is the discount tonight yang I akan dapat? So the discount tonight will be, this will be uh, 10% lah because 12 days. So 10% is every time when you find the discount, it must be based on the haga. But for this discount tonight, it's not haga scenario. We based on haga invoice then times the percentage. So the haga invoice, you take the latest one, one three four one times ten percent because I pay within fifteen days. So the discount will be RM one three four and ten cent. That's the discount tonight. Okay, so that is discount. But what about the jumlah yang perlu dibayar? So what is the formula for jumlah yang tadi? Same thing, jumlah yang perlu dibayar. So you're using the harga invoice minus the discount tonight. So it's almost the same thing lah. But now you instead of using a hugger scenario, you're using a hugger invoice to minus the discount tonight. Okay, so this jumlah yang perlu dibayar is the same thing as amount bersih yang perlu dibayar. It's the same thing. Jumlah yang perlu dibayar, amount bersih yang perlu dibayar. Okay, so here jumlah yang perlu dibayar. So you use the Hagen invoice one three four one one three four one minus the discount to now which is one three four and ten cent so you get rm one thousand two hundred and six ninety cent this is a jumla employee buyer if i pay on 17th of January. But what about B? That pay on 25th of January, that we recalculated 20 days, and 20 days, I get 5%. Therefore, now you need to change the amount. Instead of 10%, it is a 5% discount tonight. So use back the Hagar invoice is on latest one. One, three, four, one. Now, instead of times 10%, so can I add times a 5% discount tonight? So 
so it, it goes to 67.05 then the jumlah yang perlu dibayar so you use that 1341 but now you have to minus the discount tuna which is 67 ringgit and 5 cent and you get One thousand two hundred seventy three and ninety five cents. So this is for B. And what about C? The jum okay, so for C is more than 20 days, definitely. If you want to calculate, you use your hand or whatever, you calculate it is definitely about mm, 20 days plus 10 days. This should be about 30 days. So 30 days, other share that the other share is for 30 days, meaning 30 days the other discount. So when there is no discount, zero percent, meaning jumlah yang polu di baya is equal to the Hager invoice. One, three, four, one. Don't don't that's it. Yeah, or not. So if okay. And you have done this part, give me a done, D-O-N-E in the chat box. <laughs> so you just need to understand and know this part. And I believe that in the exam, they won't ask to this level uh, of testing uh, okay so normally just some simple one uh, right so they won't go like from from Bali then you other pulangan then after pulangan you other like this satu nota debit nota debit means other uh, tukuran charge so and then you get another discount tonight there's like four levels of calculation okay but if you understand this one then very good already okay so the rest done or not? If done, give me a done. Heaven, then I'll have to wait for you. Okay, so that, that's how you work for A, B. So maybe I like and see the whole picture. Smaller. Yeah, quite a lot, huh? Be like that. Okay, wait here like that. Shit. Yeah, that, uh, then you can see the whole thing. Uh. So this is the working in the beginning from the 5th of January. At first, you believe the pasu on 9th of January, you are the pulangan. Okay. The pasu on 16, you are the kurang chash. So you bought, 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 bought. And then only the A, B, and C. So you can take photo if you want. So I give you five. Four, three, two, one, bye bye. Okay, so that's all for your chapter three. Okay, so now we will do chapter four. New, 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 new. So, uh, yep, okay. for that, let's open here. So, this is chapter four. Chapter four is Buku Chatatan Batama. Okay, so are you here or not? If you are here, give me a four in the chat box. Chapter four, Bab Lapan, Buku Chatatan Batama. Now, this is super important. 
for form four. Okay, so in form five, there are chapters that are important for form five, and then for form four, there are chapters that are important for form four. So example for form four will be about two, the persamaan perikanan. That's why in your first exam for form four, normally they will ask a lot. The one question for bab two persamaan perikanan and penyata kedudukan kewangan dalam bentuk T, there is about twenty marks, or maybe. Uh, because they can't test a lot because they you only learn like from bug one some by bug three like that so in the first, first exam they will give like this bug two personal preconan quite a lot of marks so for those students that have master bug two for your form for definitely you can get high marks like 80 plus and above All right so other after bug two after you've done the first exam then now the second exam that's coming for you Will be more towards to buku cadangan pertama, bab three. Sorry, not bab three, bab four. Buku cadangan pertama, this one, and then bab five, leisure. Buku cadangan pertama. Nah, four and five. This other, uh, important one, and then. Eight, ah, eight and seven. Seven, you need to know. You must know. Seven is super important because this seven and eight will leads you to form five. Ah, so for those that are form five, you need to know. For seven is what the penyata kewangan, and for eight is the pelarasan. Pelarasan, you learn all all about the susun nilai, hutang lapo. And so on. Okay. Then you go to form five. We won't learn this again. Then we straight away do a lot of polarizing questions. Record a link up in form five. Okay. So come back to here, chapter four. A buku catatan pertama. What is buku catatan pertama? Buku catatan pertama ialah buku catatan asal yang merekodkan segala urus negara penegak. But just by reading this buku catatan pertama, you can see a buku is buku is a book. Right, catatan means what? Record, catat, recording. And put number is what is first. Yeah. That's why this book catatan pertama is like a first record after the document. Okay, if you have a textbook with you, a form four textbook, you go to page one. Is it page one? I mean, bab one, maybe page one or two or three. Then you see something called uh, a cycle. I don't know what I for, have forgotten what it called, uh, but is a uh, perikanan something something perikanan. Okay, so it's like a a cycle. Okay, so at first is document, and then you come down to be what to be buku catatan pertama. Okay, if you have it, then you see. It. Yeah, yes, city. Is kitaran perikanan. Yep. So when you look at the kitaran perikanan, so the first thing is document which we have learned in bab three, and then come down the second one after the document is actually buku catatan pertama. That's the first thing after the document. So it's actually from document, we make it into, or uh, somehow a word form. Ah, uh, we have to record it because this document you don't understand. Other people don't understand. That's why they need us, an accountant or bookkeeper, to transfer the information or the data. I would say document is data. It's actually data. And then data itself doesn't have meaning. You have to know that. Okay. That's why now, uh, there are a lot of like what big data. If you know. Okay, so a lot of data. So this data, we need what data analysis. To what to analyze the data, and this is actually a process. And you go through a process from data, it actually becomes what an information. It is the information that we need. We don't need data. It's only the expert need data, and the expert after reading and interpreting the data, then 
they give out their message, their information. So us, the consumer, normally, like people like us, we just listen to information. So they say, uh, you need to wake up early in the morning so that your life will be healthier. That's just the information. We don't know why, how it works. So how it works and everything will be data, which is what collected by the scientists. Scientists will collect data and see, okay, so we do a lot of researches, a lot of experiment. So we actually compose about 500 different people from age five until age 60. So that's our population sample. Okay, then we give them a same house. Everyone lives in the same house, but maybe they, they wake up in different time and sleep at different time. And then at the end, we see that which, uh, who is the person that can live longer? Uh, something like that. So that actually data. If we, we don't have any knowledge, we just read the data, we'll be like, what are these? You got a lot of graph, la, a lot of this thing, la, table. La. I don't understand. You know what I mean? So it is then after reading the data, then they interpret it and they come up with a conclusion, which is the information. And this is what we need. You know what I mean? So same thing when we come to accounting, there are a lot of data, like documents. And this is the data. So now we need to make it into information. The information is at the end, which is normally the penyata kewangan, which we learn in Bab 7. So this is the final stage where it's like a report. We can tell the people, how is our company functioning? Is our company going good? Is our company growing? Or we are actually uh, losing at the market? Are we earning a lot of profit or we are actually making a lot of losses? Banyak rugi. So this is the information. Okay, but from here, Bukujan Pertama is actually a converting. It's like a process. All right, so this is part of the process. So from document, become a Puku Catatan Pertama. So this is the first part, the first process. So in this Bukujan Pertama, I break it down to three parts. First one is journal. Second is buku tunai. And the third is buku tunai runcit. And today, we focus in journal arm. So in journal, there are two lagi. The two lagi, journal arm and journal has. Just like your kata nama, there's a kata nama arm and there's a kata nama has. All right, so kata nama arm is more what? It's like more general. Baju... Kasut. I don't want to say kata nama khas. So what? Gucci, uh, Adidas, all these are kata nama khas. Alright? So, you just need to know that this is more general. That's why in English, it is called a general, general, journal. Uh, like that. Okay? So, this is a table, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so for now, um, should I go into it first? But actually, no. After I, I'll explain it first, then only this thing will make sense to you. And so here is the format. Okay, so you can see that all these other than general arm, they are general berlian, general jalan, pulungan berlian, pulungan jalan. So all these are in general has. Okay, only arm is arm. And other than that, if you don't see an arm, then the rest will be in general has. So all the general general is in general has. So this is the format, which you will see later. Okay. But before I go into it, okay, let me draw a whiteboard for you to understand it better. Okay. So in this buku channel pertama, like what you have seen just now, you actually break down the journal and Buku tunai, buku tunai runcit. Right, okay. But before that, recall back the 3D and in one of the 3D, I say there are dual chara. Right. Dual chara membeli menjual. So in, in business, there are two ways, always. 
okay, to buy and to sell. We can either suchara, you buy suchara credit, or you draw suchara credit. Yeah, either way, believe, draw, same thing. But it's either suchara credit or suchara tunai or check. Meaning this, we pay now or I sell and I collect money now. Now means I can either use cash or I write check, I give you. Okay, so I pay now, settle now. But for credit means what? Later. Social credit. Okay, I get my thing now. I buy sayo, I tapas sayo now. Tapi I buy social credit maksud, I hutang dulu. I pay later, maybe next month. Right, so this is the difference between social credit and social tonight. And for social credit, when you see a social credit, what document do I do we use? Invoice. Is social tonight a check? What document do we use? Bill tonight. All right, you can draw this out on your book. It will be better for you. Okay. After that, yeah, now is the thing. So for Sutra Credit and Sutra Tunai, we use a different buku Charan Pertama. So let's talk about Sutra Tunai first. So whenever you see Sutra Tunai, meaning it's Sutra Tunai, meaning by cash. So in, straight away, you know that we record this in buku Tunai. That's why there is a Tunai here. You know what I mean? So this is whenever it's a chart tonight, Burley, Baron Sachar tonight, Major Baron Sachar tonight. When you see Sachar tonight or Sachar check, this is the keyword. You don't have to think twice. You lang song tao, memang, 100%. Yala dalam puku tonight. But if someone check up Sachar credit, ah, then you have to think because other doer. So, depending on apa yang kamu beli atau apa yang kamu jual yang secara kredit. So, for secara kredit, is either journal arm or journal hearts. Oops. So far, are you following? If yes, give me an F in the chat box. You are following, give me an F in the chat box. All right? So this is very important and you just need to understand it first. Okay? Because if you don't understand the structure credit and structure tonight, later you'll be confused throughout the whole chapter four. Okay? So again, structure tonight, buku tonight because of this word, buku tonight. All right? Therefore, structure credit is either journal arm it must be journal. Okay, the keyword will be journal. But is it journal arm or journal has? Okay, now, another key third, uh, keyword. So whenever you see a surcharge credit, okay, and they say, yelah tentang barang niaga. Right, big, big there. Barang niaga, then it is jenahas. Yeah, I don't care. Is it beli barang niaga secara credit atau menjual barang niaga secara credit? It is all in jenahas. So when I say beli barang niaga, then it will be dalam jenah belian secara credit. But then if Saya cakap, saya beli barang niaga secara kredit. Ah, then it will be in buku tunai. Let me repeat. When I say beli barang niaga, barang niaga secara kredit, then because it is secara kredit, then it must be journal. Can you see or not? Secara kredit, it must be journal. But what are we believe? Barang niaga. You see barang niaga? Okay, then this is a journal has. And more specific dalam journal has ada banyak. Ada journal belian, 
jana jualan, jana pulangan belian, pulangan jualan, and so on. Alright, so this one beli, therefore this is jana belian. But if someone check up, this is beli barang ni aga, secara check. Because this is secara check, I don't care what they beli or jual or whatever it is, when it's secara check, keyword check, terus bagi buku tunai. Ah, do you understand? If yes, now you give me a U if you understand. So same thing. If I change this, okay. Instead of beli, I say jual. When I say menjual barang secara kredit, same thing. If it's secara kredit, it must be jenah. Look at the blue one, ah. Okay, now, jual apa? So now you jual, can you see barang niaga? Okay, and you jual barang niaga, barang niaga must be in jenah khas, and jual maksud, this is a jenah jualan. That's why there, you will see there is something called a jenah jualan. In a jenah khas. Okay, again, if I say menjual barang niaga, secara check, I don't care what you jual, okay, as long as it's secara check, same thing, in buku tunai. That is it. Okay, you don't have to think twice. Either secara tunai, secara credit. Okay, now, next. So, other than barang niaga, other than barang niaga, ah, then we, yang secara credit, meaning we throw into general. I mean like what? Maybe you beli perabot. Secara kredit. Ah, you know, you beli perabot secara kredit. First thing, secara kredit, then it must be in general. But what are we buying? Perabot is perabot a barang niaga? Bukan. So if it's not a barang niaga, then it is in general. And what is barang niaga? In case you don't know what is a barang niaga, barang niaga means barang yang berkaitan dengan bisnes awak. Let's say my business is to sell shoes, kasut. So what is my barang niaga? My barang niaga will be kasut. So all these perabot, kereta, are not my barang niaga. They are just my asset, bukan semasa. They are just my asset. So like maybe ambilan. Uh, ambilan. Ambilan. Barang niaga. Ah, this one you can put in jenah. Because why? Because in jenah has there's no jenah ambilan. There's only jenah belan, jenah jualan, jenah. Uh, what do I write? I write here. Pulangan belan and pulangan jualan. And pulangan jualan. I write here. Pulangan jualan. Okay, so come back to here. You can see it all here in your in the nota that I have given you. This part, all right? So jenah has this all, but for this one is a bit special. This jenah penerimaan tunai and pemerintah tunai is I will explain it another day. But for now, we just go for this one and most importantly this one. That's where this box come out. This table, all right? You can see that membeli menjual barang niaga secara kredit. Is what is in general belan jualan depending on you beli atau you jual. Okay, if it's a chart tonight, memang in buku tonight. Credit either here, all right, either general arm or general uh, belan or general has. All right, so now you see you beli atau menjual aset bukan semasa. This is not a barang niaga. If it's not a barang niaga, then it is in the general arm. Okay, now next you secara tunai check. I don't care is it an asset bukan semasa or barang niaga as long as it's check order tonight straight away go to the buku tonight. Okay, now next. You ambilan. Ambilan atau bawa masuk your asset bukan semasa. Okay. Jenak am. But if it is tonight, you ambil tonight atau you bawa masuk tonight berkaitan dengan tonight, boom, go to buku tonight. Simple as that. Do you 
Understand? If yes, give me a yes in the chat box. Yes, give me a yes in the chat box. Okay, so this is not hard, but you just need to understand first step, then later go and practice. Okay, so now let's say we want to do a journal arm. So this is a format. So this is a format that you must remember. You have to memorize it. But normally, I don't encourage my students to memorize. I just ask them to do questions. So the more questions they do, the more they remember the format. Okay, so this is a general arm. So you go other, other tarik, you other butil, other folio, other debit and credit. Of course, this is a bit senge. Uh. The debit and credit must be imbang bunyo. Lah. Okay, so same side, nicer. Then the, the year, tahun, unit, RM, RM, and then the date. Then what to debit, sorry, and what to credit. And then there is a criterion. So now I will show you quickly. So come to question one. Okay, question one. Do I do this? Okay, and Excel. Oops. All right. Okay. Look at question one quickly. Um, am I sharing this screen? Yep. Okay. So one. So first thing, read the question. So by the first January twenty nineteen, Jackie memulakan perniagaan dengan membawa masuk tunai berjumlah forty thousand ringgit ke dalam bank dan perabot bernilai 20,000 ke dalam perniagaan, sediakan jurnal arm. Okay, so now they ask us to do a jurnal arm. So for jurnal arm, normally, it's like an opening. So when you read a book, if you read a book, in the beginning, there's actually introduction. Then there's chapter one till the end of chapter, maybe depending on, okay? And then the end, Normally, there is like, a, I don't know, lah, okay? Maybe there is a, the, the index or whatever. Okay, the reference and so on, right? So, but before that, the first thing is introduction. Therefore, in your journal arm, we always got introduction. Okay, the introduction for journal arm is either you memulakan penegaan. If you can recall back for your personal arm perekonan, there is also a memulakan penegaan Two ways, either memulakan atau continue. But the reason is either you just start your business or uh, we have started last year and now we are continuing. All right. So now for this one, first do a general arm. So on top of it, you put the title. This is general arm. And then you do the table, the jadol. So there you go, a tarik. And then there is a butil. And then folio. Then debit, credit. Line. Oh. Okay, so not bad. Maybe here a bit spacious. Okay. So done. So something like that. Okay, just you have tarot, but you Folio, debit, credit. Okay, then the RM, you need RM. Okay, then. Ah, can you see or not? Here, I actually written down for you. Okay, later you see how to use this. Okay, then, 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 then. Okay, look at one. So first, look at this date. First January 2019, the beginning, the introduction. So, tahun je lah. 2019, so you put 2019. 
on 1st January. So, January 1. So, for this one, is always the month first, bulan, then the date. Hari, just like your, uh, what lah, the persamaan perikanan. Okay. Then, okay ah, see ah, you, now you will come into debit and credit more often. And what is debit and credit? Debit, as I have already explained to you, debit means in and credit means out. All right? Okay. So now, when Jackie memulakan perniagaan dengan membawa masuk tunai, the first thing, and then another will be parable. So when we membawa masuk, meaning the money is coming in, to the business. It's not going out. It's coming in. So when the thing coming in, the money comes into the bank account to my business, meaning we have to debit it. Okay, debit. So when we debit, this is the account. So by the way, this is tunai yang ke dalam bank. It's not tunai. Ya. If they say ke dalam bank, meaning the money will go into the bank. So this one is actually account bank. But when we write here, we don't write account bank. We just straight away write Bank. Debit, how much? 40,000. So, 40,000. Okay, and done. Parabot. So, bring in parabot, 20,000. So, you debit. Parabot. 20,000. Debit. So, that's all. Right. But in accounting, when we have debit, they must have credit as well. This is what we call system catatan begu. Whenever there's debit, there must be credit. Whenever there's a credit, there must be debit. Therefore, here we only got debit. What about credit? Meaning there's something missing out here. So that thing is actually your model. And your model must be credit. So if you see it properly, I didn't put my model here. I didn't put it here. I put it here. So you just space, you give a gap of a, a thumb, all right? Just like when you're writing essay in front, you give a, a spacing. A small spacing, or maybe instead of doing this way, okay, maybe here you space, 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 and you put a more down, something like that. So you must have an obvious gap in between to tell us that this is actually a credit. All right, so whenever you have a credit, it must be here. Just make a space and then you write what is to be credit. So how much is your model? So your model will be the 40,000 plus the 20,000 equals to 60,000. So when you add them up, it's actually like that. You can do this if you want to. So 20 plus 40 plus 20 equals 60,000. And then here will be 60,000 as well. Just like your, your person mark. At the end, it must be the same. So debit and credit must be inbound. Okay, after that, this is what we must have a keterangan at the at the end. So you want open bracket and write what is this? We need to explain what is going on, right? So this one, apa? Memulakan penegan. So you just write a quick one. Memulakan penegan. This one is to make yourself understand and also for other people to understand what uh what is going on in the business on 1st of January. All right, so like that, done. Of course, in exam is not that short, lah, all right? But this is just the first part of it, just to let you know like how to do the permulaan. So are you okay or not? If okay, give me an okay in the chat box. All right, so all the debit, you, be uh stick to this line while the credit 
there, there has a gap. Is a gap, and then a keterangan. So, in exam, there's actually one mark if I'm, if I'm not uh, mistaken. For there's a mark for this keterangan, so you need to write. That's why here, ah, uh, I put it here. So you can either memulakan penegan or the other one. This one. This one is when your business is berterusan, continuing. Okay, so I will show you an example for it. This one, question two. So when you see question two. Okay, this is actually baki baki yang diambil pada uh, first January 2020 in the beginning of the year. Normally, all this will be on first of something, either first of January, first of February, first of September, or whatever. So now it's first of January, just like an introduction as well. But now this is baki baki, meaning we kita tak ada memulakan, kita sekarang berteruskan, continue the business. Alright, so for this one, same thing. Go to question two. Okay, so they're going to journal arm. You record this thing down. So a journal arm. And then you do all these. Uh... By the way, this folio is actually, uh, we don't need to use it in our accounting for now. Right? Because all is handwritten. But this folio is actually for some code. All right, is uh normally will be used when kita bought accounting per computer, computer based. So when we want to check like what happened, then there is a code that is easier for us to check. But now because it's handwritten, therefore we don't need this column actually. But you just put it there as a as a form of format. But we are not going to use this column for folio, All right? Just letting you know. Okay, then this is what now. Uh, after you have your tarik, quick, quick, tarik, util, folio, debit, credit, RM, RM, make sure it's there. And now this year you have to change to 2022 based on here, 2022, January 1. Okay, now. So now, this thing will be testing your BAP2 classification. So in your classification, I told you there is asset, there's liability, there's equity per mille. Let me write down. Okay, asset, liability, equity per mille, hasil belanja. But knowing these five classification is not enough for here. Because why? Because this thing, later we need to put it into debit and credit side. So we need to know which one is in debit and which one is in credit. Give me another five minutes, all right? We end the class in five minutes, okay? So now, you have to learn this power thing up, powerful thing up, all right? This is a technique that I have been teaching all my students and they have been using this up and very useful. So draw this now. You put something like that. This is a T. So on your left or on your debit side, okay, you put A, B, A. Or you can call it ABA. ABA, A, B, A. And on your right, you put L, H, M. Lim, but it's not L I M Lim, it's L H M Lim. Okay, there's a H there. So this is on your right your credit side. Okay, so make sure you write it down and memorize this up. So Abba Lim. Okay, so your A, your first A is actually stand for asset. Your B stands for belanja. And this A, another A, is stand for ambulan. And on your credit side, your L stands for liability. And your H stands for hasil. And your M stands for modal. So it's actually quite making sense. All right. So your A, opposite of A, asset, will be liability. Opposite of belanja will be hasil. 
an ambulance will be more down. So more down ambulance. Yeah. But best, remember, Aba Lim. Okay, so from here you can see that the asset is in where? In the debit side. The liability, the, the belanja B is in the debit side. The A ambulance is in the debit side. While your liability L is in the credit, your hasil is in the credit. Okay, your hasil is not in the debit side. Yeah? Your hasil is in the credit side and your end model is in your credit. That's why just now your model is in the credit side. While your bank is an asset, Parable is an asset, therefore they are in the debit side. Do you understand? Give me a ABBA link in the chat box. A-B-A-L-H-M. Everyone type it there. In the chat box. Yes, yes. A-B-A-L-H-M. Everyone, not just one, two, three, four, five. I want more, everyone. Okay, so if you don't learn this up now, you will regret for sure. Okay, so quickly, knowing this, now we apply this one, this into it. So for 2.9, we know that this is an asset, right? I don't have to repeat it again. You know that 2.9 is an asset. Bank is an asset, right? Inventory is an asset. All this is already in chapter two. I think I explained it a lot, a lot of times. But for account balloon buyer, you know, ABB is a liability. Right, and if it's a liability, a liability check here, L is in the credit side. Therefore, you need to space one, two, three, four, five, spacing of a gap of your thumb. So you put account, balloon buyer, I'll just put an ABB there, Putra trading. But, and then the number four one is ABT, account, balloon terima is an asset. A for asset, asset is in debit as well. So you bring it back. ABT account balloon terima, uh, Rita Enterprise. But of course, hold on for a while, don't write anything first. Okay, this one, normally the liability we put it, all the credit would be at the bottom. So we do it like that. That's it. Right, so put in all the asset first. Okay, so this one not yet. Then pinjaman later because it's a liability. And then kenderaan asset. So you put down kenderaan. And then premise is asset. So okay, then only you put all the liability, all the one on the credit. So it will look nicer and clean. All right. So the ABB account balloon buyer will be the putra height. And not putra height, but putra trading. Okay, then and also the pinjaman bank, the liability. So there are two liability here, two credit. Pinjaman bank. So you put in all the figure. Lah. So for 29, the debit will be in the debit column, credit will be in the credit column. So the 29,500, bank 25,000, inventory 10,600, ABB uh, 4,800, ABT 5,500, return the price. Pinjaman bank 12,000 here. Pandora on 30,000 and premise 85,000. Right? After inserting all the figure, but now look here carefully. If we do a closing like any, okay, we imbang can see if imbang or not. Huh? Okay. So we add up all the debit here because how much? Fifth, one, five, seven, six hundred. But if we add up all the credit here, how much do we get? Eh? Only 6,800. What happened? It must be imbang. I told you at the end. This amount for debit credit in the beginning must be imbang. But how come it's not imbang? Meaning something is missing out. And if you know, you should be able to realize by now we miss out something which is called what the model of course what in the beginning in the business there must be a model there they must have a capital there all right and how do we get a model if you can recall the formula model equals to asset 
minus the liability. Therefore, your model is actually, how do you get this one? So here, your credit you can equals to this Joomla, 157600, because it must be the same here. So in order to get a model, you can use this Joomla, 157600 minus your 4800 minus your 12,000. So when you look carefully, it's actually this formula. Your asset, all the asset, minus your 4,800, your liability, and your 12,000 liability. Then you get your model. Do you understand? If yes, give me an M in the chat box. So you can now that slowly you are seeing what we have learned from Bak Dua, the Persamaan Prekonan, here in this... Uh, Catatan buku yang pertama. And that's why I say the formula for this asset equals to liability plus equity per million is very important. And this is the formula where you get the one just now. EP equals to asset minus liability. And EP, we can make it as a model. So model equals to asset minus liability. Same thing. All right, all right. So the rest, do you understand this model stuff? If yes, give me an M. Can you get this figure or not? Yes, give me an M, M. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so not done yet. We need to complete it, all right? By what? By the keterangan. All right, so open bracket. How do we close this? So for this one, either two only. Is either... Uh, memulakan, memulakan penegaan or this one, asset. So for now, because it's baki-baki, therefore you use this one. Asset, you just copy it down. Asset, liability, then model. Pada tarik ini. Boom, that's it. Then you can close it. Okay, so it's either one. It's either the memulakan penegaan or this asset. Because here, this is a baki. Therefore, we are actually showing the asset. Asset, the liability, these two liability, and also the model. Pada tarik ini, 1st of January. Okay? Are you guys done? If yes, give me a D-O-N-E done. Give me a D-O-N-E if you are done. Okay, after done, be patient because I'm going to give you some homework to do for you to do some practice. Okay, so if you're done, take out this book your Form 4 Pelangi Workbook and turn to page 43. Page 43. So page 43, this is still in document. So I want you to do some questions on the document. 43, do questions 16 and 17. And then you go to page um, 46 and do question 22. So this question 22 and question 23 from page 46 is actually a question on the discount. What we have done in the beginning of the class, the discount to know, discount Niagara and how to calculate it. So do the practice on it. Lastly is what we have learned today. Page 58. And this is a new chapter, chapter four and do question eight and nine. So this is to just some... Um, uh, simple introduction into this general app. All right, so total six questions, simple questions. If uh, you have noted down, then you may leave. All right, and I will see you in the next class. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.